Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. April is Donate Life Month. It is to raise awareness about organ donation. Today we're going to discuss the organ transplantation process, including how recipients are identified, what criteria they need to meet, as well as how donors are selected and what criteria a donor needs to meet in order to donate their organs. Organ transplant is a medical procedure that saves thousands of life each year. One organ donor can save up to eight lives. How are organ transplant recipients identified? So first they have to undergo a medical evaluation. And later in this video, I'm going to discuss the criteria that they need to meet in order to be considered a candidate. But at the very basic level, they need to be evaluated for the degree of organ failure that they have. And if there are other organs that are failing, that might need to be considered for transplantation. Some people receive two or three organs rather than just one. For the medical evaluation, they have a history, a physical, and some laboratory evaluations to determine if they're fit to receive an organ. Some people might be too sick for an organ transplant and there's a fear that they might not be able to withstand the surgery. A crucial part of organ recipient evaluation is blood typing. A patient's blood type determines which organ is a best fit for them. So even if somebody is at the top of the list and an organ becomes available, if it is not the correct blood type, then it will go to the next person who is a match for that blood type. If there's any mismatch between the blood type of the patient and the organ that they are offered, then that can be catastrophic. That will create an immune reaction and have instant rejection and most likely result in the patient's death. The next thing that is considered is the medical urgency for this recipient to get an organ. The placement on the list is dependent on how sick the patient is. If it is critical and the patient is in the hospital in the intensive care unit, they are often placed higher on the list than people who are waiting at home because they are so sick and their organ failure is so severe that they are required to be in a hospital in the intensive care unit, most likely on life support. And as I mentioned, there is a waiting list for organ transplant. This is maintained by a national organization called the United Network for Organ Sharing. And some other things that go into consideration when choosing a recipient is their age, their overall health, and if they have any other medical problems that might preclude them from receiving an organ. As I said, there are some criteria that need to be met in order for a patient to be listed for an organ transplant. The first is medical need. The patient needs to be in a degree of organ failure that justifies an organ transplant. Organs are a finite resource, so unfortunately, we cannot give them to everyone who has mild to moderate organ failure. This patient needs to be in severe end stage organ failure. And like I said, sometimes they are on life support while they are waiting for organs. Secondly, the compatibility with the donor's blood type. And if the patient has any additional antibodies that need to be considered before a patient can receive an organ. So a lot of times people might be listed for an organ, but if they have a lot of antibodies that have been created, most likely from prior blood transfusions, then they have a stricter criteria in terms of which organ they can receive. So if somebody is listed for lungs, but they have a lot of antibodies in their blood, if lungs become available, the donor cannot have those particular antigens that will react with the recipient's antibodies because that will create an immune reaction. And again, this reaction can lead to rejection. In order to minimize the chances of antibodies being formed in patients' blood, then for people who are listed for organ transplant, we are very judicious with giving them blood products. A lot of times when they're exposed to something from another patient's body, and this includes blood, then they can form antibodies against it. Somebody's overall health is also taken into consideration because an organ transplant is a major, major surgery. If there is a concern they are not able to survive the surgery, then they may not be listed in terms of an organ transplant. 
Additionally, if somebody has a terminal illness where their life expectancy is shortened, typically less than one year, then they are not considered a candidate for the organ. Again, organs are finite resources. You want to have a recipient who will be able to have this organ for many years to come. Age is another criteria, but every center has a different age cutoff for specific organs. And sometimes if somebody is over the age cutoff, but in very good health, then they'll still be considered because again, you want to offer the organ to somebody who is able to have it for multiple years. So even if somebody is over the age cutoff, but they're in good health and it's expected they'll live for many more years, then they are considered. And also we want people who are going to take good care of their organs and be able to follow up with post-transplant care. Receiving an organ is leading up to it is a very long journey but also after transplantation there are a lot of things that a patient needs to do they have to take their immunosuppression every day so they do not have organ rejection they need to follow up with a lot of appointments post surgery they have to see their surgeons their transplant team many times they'll also still have medical problems that need to be followed up with so this is taken into consideration. So if somebody is not taking their medications on a regular basis, not coming to their outpatient appointments, then there is a concern that this behavior will continue after they receive the organ. The process of listing somebody for an organ is similar at all the institutions. There is a group at each facility called the Medical Review Board or MRB, and this is multiple healthcare providers, multiple doctors who discuss each case, determine if the patient is appropriate to be listed for an organ transplant. So listing someone for an organ transplant is not one physician's decision. It is made with a group of physicians who know this patient well. They present the case of the patient and then they discuss some factors that will make them a, an organ transplant candidate or might not. So sometimes people are not listed, sometimes because their organ failure is not severe enough. If somebody had acute organ failure concerning that they might need a transplant and they start to recover, then they're not listed because they are showing signs of recovery. So they continue to monitor this patient to see if they continue to improve, but they're not listed because they're short, starting to show signs that they do not require an organ transplant anymore. The MRB determines if somebody is listed for an organ transplant, and they're also determined if somebody is delisted and deactivated. These are two different things. Somebody might be inactive on the list if if they're actively listed for an organ, but they might be on what we call an internal hold. This means that there is something acute going on with the patient that we're waiting to have resolved before they can qualify for an organ transplant again, but they're not completely removed from the list. The most common is when somebody has an active infection. You don't want somebody to receive an organ transplant while they have an active infection going on because again, we need to suppress our immune system and this can be catastrophic if they have a severe infection happening. So we wait for the infection to resolve, then their place on the list is reactivated. Somebody might be delisted if they were previously on the list, but something happened, they no longer qualify for an organ transplant. This might be if they become much sicker and they no longer are in a condition where they can handle the surgery. This might be if they're diagnosed with a terminal illness, if we find they have metastatic cancer and their life expectancy is no longer greater than one year, there are multiple reasons why someone might be taken off of the list. And again, this is not one person's decision. This is based on a group of people who evaluate the details of each case to determine if somebody is a candidate or is not a candidate. Sometimes people are told they're not a candidate at this time, but if they meet certain criteria or do certain things, then they will be considered. And then in terms of waiting on the list, it depends on a couple of things. The placement on the list, and like I said, the patient's blood type, more common blood types are more likely to get organs quicker because there are more people in the population with that blood type. And the more antibodies you have, the more likely you will be waiting a longer time. This video is getting long, so I'm gonna make this into a two-part video. Come back next week to learn about the donor selection and how the donation process works. If you enjoyed this video and wanna learn more about the ICU and organ failure in general, don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos. I'll see you next week for part two of this video.